with that, I'm going to introduce today's speaker. Our speaker today is going to be the wonderful Mark Arnold. Uh, he's doing a topic called Today's Technology for Seniors. Mark is the computer geek to English translator. He specializes in computers and other technology for seniors. As a former Microsoft certified systems engineer and a former special ed teacher, he combines his unique background in computers and education to help his clients navigate through the maze of today's technology in a style that is simple and easy to understand. Please welcome Mark Arnold. Seniors and technology, do you think this? Okay. Sometimes people tell me, Mark, seniors don't use computers. Seniors don't need computers. Well, maybe. But there are other assistive technologies out there, your cell phones, your tablets, your home automation devices that can really add to the quality of life of our senior clients. So today, I'm going to talk about some technology for seniors, a little bit about me, the one thing that every senior needs, and I'm going to leave plenty of time for questions. Sound good? Yes. yes. Thank you. So the program I just showcased is called Let Me Talk. It's based off of PECS, Picture Exchange Communication System. And special ed teachers and speech and language pathologists have been using things like that for years. And now it is available for an Android tablet, an iPad, and your cell phone. It is a little pricey. Actually, no, it's not. It's free. You can download that right now from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. And I saw two people pick up their phones. Don't download it yet. It's fully customizable. For someone who's just recently had a stroke, we can start with something as simple as yes and no. And if you have not been able to communicate, just that can improve your outlook. From there, we can get a little bit more complicated. We can start with, you know, what do you want for breakfast? Toast, bacon, and cereal, there's three choices. And we can get all the way to the point where we have sub-menus, complicated menu and a sub-menu, where people can make complicated sentences. Now, for someone who's just had a stroke or a TBI, we can get more complicated as they progress. For someone who has a degenerative disease, we can get less complicated as that disease progresses. So that's an extreme, though. That's one end of the spectrum of care. Let's go all the way back to the other side. Let's start by talking about things that you and I might already use. We all are, are familiar with your Facebook, your FaceTime, your email, Skype, things like that. Things we already use to stay in contact with our loved ones. Gonna take that just a step further, okay? So this is Dorothy. And Dorothy still lives at home alone. And one day she's sitting in her easy chair watching television when ding dong, the doorbell rings. Well, who could that be? Now, Dorothy has a little bit of a hard time getting up out of that chair and getting around. And she doesn't want to go and see who's at the front door. So she says, Alexa, show me the front door. And her Alexa device, which is connected to her television, which is connected to her ringing video doorbell, there we go, shows a picture of who's at the door. Oh, it's Nancy. Nancy is the physical therapist coming to work with Dorothy. Because again, Dorothy has a little bit of mobility problems. 
And she doesn't want to get up to go answer the door, but the door is locked. So Dorothy says, Alexa, unlock the front door. And her Alexa device, which is connected to her Kivo smart lock, unlocks, and Nancy is able to let herself in. So she's got a little bit of extra convenience with that, right? But what if, what if it hadn't been Nancy, the physical therapist? What if it had been something else, somebody else? Well, the ring video doorbell has a motion detector, and anytime anyone comes to the door, whether they ring the doorbell or not, it makes a recording of who's ever there, okay? So now Dorothy has a little bit more security. But just one more thing. What if it had been Nancy, the physical therapist, but Dorothy didn't answer the door? Okay now. This is where Sarah comes in. Sarah is Dorothy's daughter. Sarah lives in Iowa. Okay? And when Nancy pressed the doorbell, a signal was sent to Sarah's cell phone in Iowa, and she can see who's at the door, and she can have a two-way conversation with that person. Okay? So Nancy says, hi Sarah, it's Nancy. You're not, your mom is not answering the door. Okay. And Sarah from Iowa can say, okay, I'll unlock the door, please go check on her. And Sarah opens up the Kivo app on her phone and unlocks the door from Iowa. Okay, so now we have, you know, Nancy's fine. She's just taking a nap. And uh, Sarah has more peace of mind knowing that her mom's okay. So let's look at what that took. That took an alexa enabled device like an Amazon Echo or an Echo Dot. It took a smart TV. It took a ring video doorbell and a smart lock. And with that, we get some added convenience, some added security, some added peace of mind, okay? And all that that takes is a little bit of money, and here comes the shameless plug, me. <laughs> We're someone like me who can get all those devices talking to each other. So, who am I? A little bit about me. Again, I am Mark Arnold, I am the computer geek, shameless translator. And about 20 years ago, I became a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. Now that might sound impressive, but really all it means is that according to Bill Gates, I test really well. But in seriousness, it is a big deal, and I tell you that not to impress you, but to impress upon you that my Kung Fu is strong. How strong? Strong enough that when you, your, your, uh, your client or your loved one passes away, and you realize you don't have the password to that computer, and you need to get to pictures and documents and things like that, nine out of ten times, I can get in. But that is not my most important skill set. My most important skill set is that when I talk to you about technology, it will be in a language you will actually understand. So way back when, in between being a network administrator and now, I went back to school and I became a special ed teacher. Now that's not to say my clients need special ed. It's just to emphasize I have a lot of patience and I can take things that are complicated and break them down into bite-sized pieces according to the learning style and the current level of ability of the person I'm working with. So that's a little bit about me and why I'm good at what I do. But enough about that. Let's back up for a second. What I showed you with all those devices, your ring doorbell, the Kivo lock, everything, that's kind of like the pinnacle of what we can do. Let's go back and start with just one thing, okay? If there's one thing that you're going to start that every senior needs, this is it. It's the Amazon Echo, more affectionately just called Alexa. Now there are other options out there. Google has a version, Apple has a version, but you're going to go to Amazon to buy whatever it is that you are going to get. So who's going to win? That's just my two cents on that. Um, okay, so 
So here it is, the Echo Dot. This says it was $30. I think today it might have been $35 and goes on sale for different things. It's not a subscription service. Once you buy the device, that's it. You're done. You, it'll, it'll work for you. And it can do these things. You can say, Alexa, tell me the news. And Alexa will tell you the news, any flavor of news you want. Whether you like CNN, you like Fox, you like NPR, whatever you've got to set to, it will give you your persuasion of the news. You can ask it questions. Basically, anything that you could ask of a Google search, you can ask of it. So things like, when does the nearest Walgreens close? Um, you know, how do I make them legs? Things like that. It's great for entertainment. It will play your favorite music. It will read you an audio book, like from Audible or from Kindle, and it will even tell you jokes. You can say, Alexa, tell me a Jimmy Fallon joke, and Jimmy Fallon will tell you a joke. It's great for alarms and reminders. So not just, hey, wake me up at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, or every day, don't do that, but you can set specific things like, Alexa, set up a timer for 15 minutes from now. And in 15 minutes from now, it'll go off. Or something as specific as, Alexa, remind me, Martha, it's 2 o'clock, take your blood pressure medicine. Okay. It will do lists. You can have all kinds of lists, but my, my family, we use it as a grocery list. And, um, you know, to say, Alexa, add eggs to the grocery list, add ground beef to the grocery list. And then, when that senior is then at the store, they can open up their Alexa app and see the list, or that list can go to a caregiver, and when they're at the store, they can open this up and say, oh, mom wants eggs. But this is why you really need it. This is why every senior should have it. Calls and drop-ins. Okay, so let me explain that for a little bit. Let's go back to Dorothy. Remember Dorothy? This is a better picture of her. One day, her daughter Sarah picks up the phone, but Dorothy doesn't answer. Okay? And come to think of it, Dorothy didn't answer yesterday when Sarah tried to call. Okay, wait a minute. So now Sarah starts to panic. You know, what can she do? Well, let's look at her options. She can keep trying to preach her mother, getting more and more anxious with every ring. She can make a desperate call to the fire department in Phoenix and ask them to go and check on her mom. Or, if she had bought her mom an Amazon Echo, she could open the Alexa app on her, on her phone and say, Alexa, drop in on mom. And instantly, she would be connected to the Echo device at her mom's house, in her living room. Okay? Essentially, she's on speakerphone, and she can see, oh, Mom, are you there? Oh, hi, Sarah. Mom, why aren't you answering the phone? Oh, I must have turned it off. <sighs> Everybody relax. Find your happiness. It's okay. Dorothy is fine. But what if Dorothy wasn't fine? What if Dorothy had fallen and she couldn't get up? I'm not making a joke. Okay? If she didn't have a life alert button on her necklace or on her wrist, what would she do? Well, since Sarah bought her an echo, she could call out, Alexa, call Sarah. And the communication would start the other way. The, the dot would call Sarah's cell phone. Okay? Now, full disclosure, this, the echo dot, is not a full 100% substitute for this. Okay, it's not. But I know some people, and you might have met these people, who absolutely refuse to wear one of those life alert buttons. Okay? So I think this is the next set, next, the next best thing. I'll check on time. Okay, great. We don't get So now, we've been talking about Alexa for seniors. So we're going to have a little bit of fun. Saturday Night Live made a skit, a parody, of what would it be like if we had an Echo device specifically for seniors. It's called the Alexa, or I'm sorry, the Amazon Echo Silver. It's hilarious. This is meant to be funny. I hope you find it funny. 
If you don't find it funny, I apologize, and you're kind of stupid. So you see this. Anyway, that is my presentation. Do you have questions? <laughs> Yes, sir. What do you do about hacking? What do you do about hacking? That is a great question, and I'm glad you asked. Okay, so everybody falls somewhere on this spectrum of how worried should we be about security and all these devices taking over and such. Everything from, we don't have to worry about it at all, all the way to, Kim Jong-un in North Korea can read our thoughts we need to wear tinfoil hats. Honestly, that is the spectrum. Okay? And where everybody falls is different for everybody. So my job, I feel like, is to support you wherever you're at. So I'll give people choices. I'll tell them what they need to know. Okay, here we've set up this computer. It wants to know if you want location services on, let's say. Okay, well maybe you do, maybe you don't. But if you don't turn that on, Google Maps won't work. Because Google Maps has to know where did you start to know where you're going. So there's constantly this trade-off of, you know, what can you do and what do you not want it to do? And what the, what the best answer is, I don't know. I honestly don't. But as far as hacking, I will give you this advice. You've probably heard the, the story about uh, a ring doorbell that got hacked. You might have heard this in the news a little while ago, okay? I, have, I don't know all the details, but it really sounded to me like that person got a hold of that person's password. That wasn't a breach from Ring, okay? That was that person's password. So here you go. When you get a device, it has a default password. Your router at home has a default password. You, look, you turn it over and say, oh, yeah, this is, my, this is my network key. Change those. Because somewhere there's a list that says that that's what it is. So that's my advice on there, is to, is to be smart about it, Change your passwords. Don't use a simple password like your kid's name or whatever. And um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Aaron. How much does uh, everything cost? If you want a smartphone, a smart TV, a Alexa, oh. a board, how much is it? How much is all that? Okay, if you take out the smart TV, okay. because I have the a TV, and then there's the $3,000 TV. If you take that out, Maybe about six hundred dollars. Maybe. Okay. Don't don't hold me on that because Amazon's going to have a sale. But is there a monthly fees to that as well? There's not. There's a monthly fee to the Ring doorbell. Okay. Ring doorbell will watch one device for you or one device for you for three dollars a month. Okay. So it's, it's minimal. And then it will do your entire house for ten dollars a month. So that's what I have. And the ten dollars a month, I think that's well worth it to be able to. See what goes on. Um, uh, Nancy. Um, the use of a VPN as a way to uh, virtual private network. Virtual private network. Um, how difficult is that to set up for a non Microsoft system engineer? And what is its value in connection to this sort of setup? So these devices don't need a VPN because you're using the Wi-Fi from your house, okay? Where you might need a VPN is when you travel somewhere and you don't want to use just the open Wi-Fi that's at the coffee shop, you can utilize a VPN. When you're doing remote work with somebody, like if you have to remote into, or rather have someone else remote into your computer, a VPN is good. And if you're doing something that's really high security, having a VPN, and there are physical VPNs, like a hardware and there's software ones, and, you know, they're, they're out there, and, um, yeah, I don't know if that, okay. that is yeah. right. Okay. Kelly. Mark, what do you suggest for keeping track of the zillion passwords? Yes. Okay, this is what I do, this is me personally. I have an Excel spreadsheet that has all my passwords, and it is tucked away in my computer with a name you wouldn't think of, in a place you would not look, okay? And then my, my computer is password protected, okay? My, my kids know how to get in there, okay? 
and then I have a printout of all my passwords, and that I keep in the safe. Okay? And my daughter knows how to get to the safe. She knows that that's what the passports are, that's what the password, or the, yeah, you know, the end of life documents, everything. That's what I do personally. Um, I think that's a good solution. It, it, it marries that. We well, don't want to just have a little book just out there in, you know, on your on your desk for somebody to come and just, you know, oh now I'm now I'm in. But you also, you know, you need to keep track of it somehow. And I mean I can't remember every password I have. So yeah, sir. Hi Mark, uh, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what do you see on the horizon coming uh, in six months, you know, six years, uh, you know, going out in terms of technology that we can expect to all be using or being exposed to? Gosh. Um, flying cars. Yeah. We were I promised know. flying cars by the Jetsons. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have flying cars. Um, we're going to see more and more. We're going to see more and more applications of voice recognition. We're going to actually. It's going to get more complicated. The, the, uh, the uh, artificial intelligence is going to get better. Because right now, when I say, um, you know, Alexa, play music, or Alexa, play classical music, it understands that. If I say, Alexa, um, can you play that song that goes, da 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 someday it will be able to do that. You know, but, but sometimes, and now I'll go back to this for a second, sometimes if you ask Alexa, too complicated a question, it doesn't know what to do. Because Alexa is kind of like a seven year old. It doesn't do compound sentences and things like that. I think that's where it's going to go. Can I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, you. great. Yes. Do you know how long before Alexa is going to be able to understand my back east uh, dialect? And, yeah, sorry, <laughs> when I talk to her, she doesn't know what else. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, bud. Same thing with Abigail. How about buying? How do you sell it? Because uh, I work with a lot of people, they want nothing to do with technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understand you just set it up. How do you how do you get them to use it? Do you have any recommendation on getting them to buy into that? Other than demonstrating it. That's actually where I'm about to go is to demonstrate. Um, here's something. If let's say and this, this device I didn't showcase today because we would have opened up a bigger can of worms, but there's an Echo device called the Echo Show. And basically, it has a little screen to it. You might be able to go to, let's say, your mom, just for, for example. Mom, here's this Echo Show, and I have one at my house. And with it, you can say, you know, drop in on Sally, and you can see the grandkids every day. When they come home from school, they can say, drop it on grandma, and boom, there they are. So that might be a, a door in to show value. Like, why does this matter to them? Another thing is, is that if they're having a harder time with fumbling with the remote control, getting their phone to work, things like that, you can explain to them that, okay, at my house, my son sits down on the couch and says, Alexa, turn on the TV. The TV turns on. Alexa, play the Flash. And Flash comes up on Netflix. Okay? That's a lot easier to do. I mean, you could do it if you wanted to. That's a lot easier to do than take a remote control and... Right? So if you can show value, why it matters to them, I think that would be the way to go. I hope that helps. Yeah. So many people are scared of technology, you know. They, true. they defeat themselves before they even try it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they can. Yeah. yeah. And they don't realize it's made for kids can do it now. They don't realize it. Okay, there's a there's, but just a second, there's there's this idea that because kids can do it, it must be easy. Here's the thing. My kid was born just about with an iPhone in his hand. Okay? <laughs> It's a different way of thinking. It really is. And if you haven't been exposed to it all your life or half your life, it can really be difficult. And hopefully that's where I or someone else like me can come in and say, 
this is how you need to think about it, and this is what you need to do so you can get what you want out of it. Yeah, I mean, they grew up with a radio. It's just something that we all have. Mm -hmm. And an iPhone now is just something kids have. They don't even, yeah. they don't even get it. It's just, it is. A lot of the people I've seen who've been turned off of technology, it's because someone tried to teach them how to use a cell phone. And they're so traumatized from that very negative experience that they're kind of closed minded. I think the fact that this is hands free can be really good for some people. Doesn't work if you have backy's heavy accent or if your disability affects your vocal quality, yes. then there's other solutions. But I would say a lot of the closeness had to do with the first technology we tried to push on a senior was the cell phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I just want to um, say my experience. I'm a senior citizen. I live alone. And I had a landline and a cell phone. And the reason I kept my landline, which I never answered because it was never really a personal phone call. It was all these calls that I didn't want to take. So I thought, well, I needed to have my landline still because when I can't find my cell phone, I would call my, call my cell phone and then it would ring and, and I could find my cell phone in my house or up. So then, uh, with Mark's help, I asked him a few questions about, you know, that. I said, if I, if I ask my Alexa to call my phone, can it do that? He said, yes. So I got rid of my landline, and now if I can't find my phone, I say, Alexa, call my phone. And it calls my phone, and then I can find my phone. So that's one thing that I do. And the other thing is, I said to Mark, and Mark is my son, by the way. Um, <laughs> so um, I said, you know, uh, my husband's deceased, so here I am living alone in this big house, and so I got another uh, Echo Dot for the bedroom because here's what I can do. if, Because I started thinking, what if I fall and I can't get up? I don't want to have one of those life alert things. <laughs> uh, also, you don't always have that on. So if something happens to me and I can't get to the phone, I can say, Alexa, call Mark, or Alexa, call 911 or something, and Alexa can hear me from wherever I am in the house. So, you know, that's really um, a safety thing, and I think a lot of senior citizens that just live alone might uh, benefit from that. So I just want to say that. By the way, Mark's mom recommends Mark highly, it's not a my <laughs> Is one uh, one unit enough for an entire house? How big is the house? Two bedrooms and a. You know, uh, if uh, if you put an echo dot on on that table, it could handle this room, but there's no walls. Okay, so the sound's not going to stop. It's, so if you've got a, a little apartment, then one's fine. In, in her particular house, she's got one kind of in the, I think it's in the kitchen, okay, which kind of leads to the main room as well. And then she's got one back around the corner of the bedroom because it won't reach. But at $30 or $35, you can have as you know, many as you want. Because you hook it up to other non-other smart speakers instead of like, like Google or yeah. the other things. Yes, you can, you can take an output from an Echo and go into whatever speaker you want. It has an auxiliary out. I'm sorry, I'm talking to you for a second, but Aaron understands what I'm saying, right? Yes. Okay. But, I, I think that, Debbie? Um, so my question is, I just heard that the new smart TVs are actually watching us. How much of that is going on with the TVs, with Alexa, and all of that? They're yeah, listening to everything else you're saying. <laughs> if it's on, they're listening to every conversation you're having. So, have you seen the movie Snowden? Yes. yes. Okay, it's a little bit like that. It's a little scary out there, okay? Here's the thing. For the Amazon Echo or one of those devices to work, it has to be listening 
so it can hear the word Alexa so that it can respond to you. So theoretically, Kim Jong-un is listening to all our thoughts and all our, our conversations. I, I don't mean, I didn't mean to hear about him. Um, yeah, and again, there's that, there's that security, there's that, you know, where do you fall on the spectrum? If you don't want to have a digital footprint at all, don't have a cell phone, don't have a smart TV, don't apply for a car loan, don't have a computer, don't get a mortgage. I mean, if, if, you, go on, if you want to be completely off the grid, you can go completely off the grid and, and live in a cave. But I, I, I don't mean to discount that question. I don't mean to say, oh, well. Sure you <laughs> but um, yeah, there's that, there's that ambiguity. Of like, well, are we going too far? Yeah. One more? Yes, sir. Michael. I was just going to make a comment. Mark has been out to my care home and uh, has helped one of my residents. Uh, fantastic feedback. Uh, loved him. Solved all of his problems, both on his cell phone and his computer. Thank so thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Mark, how many times have you been to my office? <laughs> I've, I've been a couple of times to Don's office. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much.